This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Talk Story with John Waihe'i. I think today's the day I find out whether our series has been renewed or not. So uh, all of you out there, I hope that you're sitting on the edge of your chairs in anticipation for another great show, and we are going to deliver. I have with me today the special advisor to Senator Brian Schott. His name is Mr. Chuck Freeman. He is probably known to a lot of you out there that who know government, who have been active in it. And he is here today uh, to talk to us about the recently passed tax legislation uh, that just recently passed in the United States Senate, right? Right. So, Chuck, welcome. Well, good so, to be here. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And... Uh, how is this good senator these days? He's working pretty hard back there. Yeah, uh, you so. know, it, it was amazing because he voted a very strong no. He did vote a, a very strong no, and in fact, all 48 Democrats voted no on this one. Yeah, I was going to ask you whether any Democrats no. at all. No, not uh, even the sort of blue dog types thought this was in any way, shape, or form, in their view, good for the country. Well, you know, for, for, you might as well explain to us what a blue dog type is. <laughs> a more conservative Joe Man Senator Manchin from West Virginia has a constituency that has a certain level of capital D Democratic values, but at the same time is, has a conservative streak to him. So he, to them, so he represents uh, that. So, in, that in other words, uh, there was no. No adjustment made to win any uh, Democratic votes? Or? No. Well, that brings us to the bill. I mean, there are three pieces that we can talk about today of this bill. One is, is how it actually passed, what happened, and gov from a government standpoint, was that good? The contents of the bill and what that means to people, and then the longer-term impacts with respect to the first question about how this bill... See, that's why you're a special advisor, yeah, because right. you break these things down into neat little packages. Okay. So let's start off. Yeah. How, how in the world did we end up with a bill that passed a 51 to 48, I guess, or 49? For, it was uh, one yeah, Republican. Was one Republican, exactly. And, he, and he's um, the Republican that, changed, that voted no was a very conservative Republican. Senator Corker from Tennessee is a very conservative, but he's stalwart, solid conservative, uh, and uh, voted no because he was concerned about the impacts on the deficit. So anyway, the result was 49-51, right. this bill passes. What, what was the process? I mean, Well, and that's why people like Senator Manchin, even though he's a bit more of a conservative Democrat, stayed together with the Democrats 48, because basically the... Republicans put this together in the cloakroom pretty much by themselves, didn't hold hearings, didn't There open were no it hearings up. on the bill? There were no hearings on the bill. Ugh. And so you had a, a lack of what people would, uh, you know, reasonably call transparency, which is a concern. But the Republicans argued, well, we knew all along what we were going to do. We've been talking about this for a long time. But they were talking to themselves, not to the general public and not to people other than lobbyists with, with broader concerns. And so we ended up with a bill passed in darkness that uh, was on straight party lines with the exception of Senator Corker. Well, the one person that crossed the party line was a conservative Republican. And my understanding was that he crossed the, the party line because this bill will, in fact, increase the deficit way beyond what people are willing to admit. I don't know if this is an exact dollar figure because nobody's at this point sure what's in the Senate version of the bill. And of course, it still has to go to back to the House and there may be conference on it. But they're talking about $1.5 to $1.7 trillion. And for- Wait, 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 say that slowly so I'll listen to it. $1.5 to $1.7 trillion. Trillion. Yeah, a trillion here, a trillion there. Yeah, it ends up to be real money. Yeah, real money with real impacts on the country. And um, for people like Senator Corker, it's an issue of, you know, where's, what are you going to do with the operating budget for the United States of America if you're at that level of deficit? I got, I got an email 
an email from, uh, you know, I, along with several thousand people, got an email from uh, Senator Schott. And in it, he describes this bill as nobody winning except lobbyists. <laughs> Uh, well, what does that uh, what does that mean? In, I, I, in, uh, I I I think that operational. corporate America would seem to, you know, they're going to if the bill holds, their their the highest tax rate will for corporate America will be reduced from thirty eight to twenty, um, so that's a substantial reduction. There's a lot of ins and outs about that. The corporate tax rate is thirty eight percent, but but that's not the adjusted corporate tax rate. Nowadays, because there are so many ways corporations can deduct this or that. Well, like uh, Donald Trump. I mean, like uh, Donald uh, Trump, that he the, didn't the, pay tax. The operating tax rate for uh, uh, corporations is probably closer to 16 percent in reality. But back to the issue, uh, it's a tremendous reduction for corporations and uh, a high value uh, savings for the upper end of the private citizen and their income tax as opposed to lower and medium ends. It's, it's not a balanced uh, tax cut at all for, well, you, for you, people. You know, when, some, when somebody tells me that this was a great bill for the lobbyists, uh, you know, one thing I know absolutely is that the average citizen, the average person, doesn't hire lobbyists. Yeah. So, I mean, who, you know, who, the people who hire lobbyists are those that have the ability to afford it. So, and organizations that represent the common person were in no way, shape, or form at a hearing or at the table. They really had zero opportunity to comment, which is a pretty shocking state of affairs for the United States. So this is the United States Senate, passes a bill. There are some members, I'm told, that didn't even know what's in the bill. I mean, most of the members don't know what was in, actually I, in the bill. I, I think it's fair to say that the actual bill that passed had not been read by any of the 100 senators in full, because they were making adjustments up to the end. They were writing um, adjustments and amendments. When you're writing adjustments, you mean literally writing hand, on the piece of written paper. Hand adjustments written under the side of the, the side of the bill, like your cliff notes in, in, in high school. Yeah, it was really uh, being cranked out the last minute. There's no way anybody read So no time. hearings. No, you're nobody right. read the bill. In full, nobody. And uh, people were amending it until the last minute. I mean, that must have been like a uh, Senate leader's uh, dream. <laughs> you know, you do this. Yeah. I mean, one guy, somebody, someplace, was the only person that actually knew what was going on. And, and, uh, and did the bill at least get to the staff? Where, where, what is it, the congressional office? that? Uh, well, the congressional budget office does the uh, assessment, the economic impact of the bill. And um, in fact, the, the, after the bill passed and in bits and pieces are the ones who are estimating the $1.5 to $1.7 trillion um, budget deficit that will be created by the bill. But... I think even at that, it's it's it, it's very difficult to get a precise figure because of the way the bill was promulgated. And so that okay, so then there's no scoring. There's no there's no really any no any real any review. No no no. no. So um, <laughs> and I know the American people are tired of hearing about a comprehensive approach to things and that sort of political language that bores everybody. But this is tax reform, and it was done in fits and starts trying to what we call Christmas tree, which in political talk means you put different things on the Christmas tree to help somebody here and somebody there. This is tax reform, but it was done with the Christmas tree as they tried to help this guy and that guy. And there are some pretty big losers in this bill. Well, before we get to losers, right. though, I mean, tell me if we did this, uh, if the state legislature did any, if they passed the bill sort of similar to this, I suspect somebody would be on their way to Halaba. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, it's absolutely illegal in Hawaii to do what the United States Senate did when they passed this bill. I've seen some pretty sneaky stuff in the, in the Hawaii State Legislature. I'm, I don't well, want to you know, raise don't... the flag quite so high on that. But generally speaking, in terms of a major piece of legislation, by the, by the United States Congress, at this point the Senate with a House version, 
this, it's, it is uh, sadly amazing that this thing happened the way it did. And it's cause for real concern, just the process for getting the content. All right, so let's talk about the winners and the losers. Yeah, it looks like uh, corporate America is going to come out way ahead based on the reduction in rates. Um, wealthy people, things like the... Um, there are over so many hundred billionaires, including people yeah. like Gates and the rest of it, who actually wrote to Congress saying, don't pass yeah, this bill. Yeah, that's the odd part. The more, the more benevolent wealthy uh, didn't want it to pass because they knew it wasn't good for the country. It would make them look bad. They already, and they already had their share. They, the robber barons of the country, on the other hand, seem to be very the hedge fund people. And you mean the hedge fund people in New York, the people who bought us the crisis of two thousand and eight eight to begin with? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sliced and diced everybody's home mortgages and created the the recession. Is it? Yeah, it's nothing. Brief. They got. They got. They all got resurrected. They made out again. Yeah. It's the Lazarus effect, you know, for yeah, those of the us old, who know their old failure story. Like success, yeah. you know, we, the country's doing well now, so what do we, what, so, what do, we do? We, we start to move into the same problems that created the, that created the issues that almost took us down in 2000. So, and, uh, so who are, uh, what, what happened to the average person? Well, what it, happens to you and me? Yeah. I mean, you know, well, I'm getting this is starting to get personal. It is starting to get personal. I think uh, it's good. we're gonna have to wait and see what actually comes out of the House because uh, there is indeed uh, still uh, an issue about reconciling Senate and House versions. Um, but it sure does look like, for example, that people in states where there are high taxes. Are going to be losers because those are the state and local taxes are no longer going to be deductible under this plan, and so. But what's the, the rationale? The what, what, what's the rationale? It's just a that? way to. I, I, you know, I wasn't there in the cloakroom, but I think it was one place they felt they could take cuts. You know, you know, from the average person, give them sort of flatten their rate and and eliminate certain deductions and rationalize it. It's also politically expedient because the states that tend to have higher taxes are the more liberal seaboard states that are doing more to help their populations. When you reality, say seaboard, you're talking New York New and York, California. New York and California. And uh, the furthest They didn't seaboard, vote for Trump, right? Where's the furthest seaboard? Well, you know, Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. And, uh, you know, I think we pay... We're uh, so seaboarded, we're surrounded by sea. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think for people who are paying... Uh, high taxes here that they're going to do well as a result of this bill. Well, you know, uh, do you think, as I do, that there was a political motivation in that particular uh, aspect of this bill? Well, I, I worked for I mean, a United States like, senator, so I try not to be too too opiney. But he's a Democrat. Republican. I mean, yes, this is, is the I, time I, to I, stick I, it to the Republicans, I, I, you know? There you go. So let's stick it. Well, what do you think? Do you think it was political? Yeah. Yeah. I do, absolutely. Yeah. Does that get you off the hook? I cleverly turned uh, the, the worm the on hook? that one to get you to say it instead of yeah, me. Yeah, did that turn you off the hook? Uh, okay. I'm this man's former communications director. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's I'll, happened I'll before. Come on we are going to take a break, I think, right now. And what we are going to do is we're going to come back and I want to talk a little bit more about the winners and the losers. What happened really to middle class America? Now there is a counter, there are some counter arguments and we'll be bringing right. that up as well. Right. But uh, it looks like uh, somebody is going to have to carry all of this and it may be you. You and me. Yeah. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. I can play, so I ain't chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah. I saw it. 
Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m. and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. I have as my special guest this afternoon, Chuck Friedman, special advisor to Senator Brian Schatz. By the way, our phone number is 808-374-2014, 808-374-2014. You don't really get a chance very often to call a senior advisor to a United States senator and ask him, what are those guys doing there? You know? Anyway, I have a chance today. So we we're talking about winners and losers. Who's going to pay for all of this stuff? Yeah, I, that's, the, that's really the fundamental question. The third part of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the three questions is, when's the day of reckoning on this? And right. what happens on that day when... Okay, the, the Republican theory, uh, try to defend it a little bit, is that this will grow the economy so much that there will be the trickle-down effect of more jobs, better jobs, more revenue for government, and that somehow, somewhat magically, like the bean and the beanstalk, it's, gonna, it's going to pay for itself, and this thing will be a perfect circle, and no, there will be no day of reckoning. No. That, unfortunately, has not happened in the past with... With, with this, uh, this it, it more than trickled on, a down, we get trickled on as, as a, We as trickled a on. That's, that's, we get, that's, we that's get trickled making, on. Uh, you we know, have been trickled on. It's and, making some weird and, images. In yeah. Well, we, is think, that what you're talking about? It's going to be the, that devastating? I think the potential for it, there's, there's no demonstrable evidence that Well, I know one this, thing. The last this time we did this, right. the last time we did this with Ronald Reagan, the trickle down didn't really happen. No. What happened was the deficit exploded, yeah. because people still needed, to, government still needed to do what government does, you know, which is uh, take care of those who can't take care of themselves, build the infrastructure that play, that makes it possible for us to prosper. There is no infrastructure plan. There is a real question about what kind of money there would be to pay for it, seeing as how the 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 deficit is going to. We believe President grow. Trump is calling. Just called. Yeah, should well, I he take the no, call? He it be, it, 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 it'll mean that he doesn't tweet us. I'm uh, sorry, Mr. President. You 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 really got to wait a little bit. <laughs> now, uh, well, I, I'd much rather talk to Chuck. Okay, so now we are in this situation, and trickling down for whatever it's worth may or may not happen. It never happened in the past. No, There's some great skepticism that it's going to happen, not going to happen again. I mean, that it'll ever happen. But in the meantime, there are actual frontline uh, people who are going to suffer. That's right. So what happens to social programs and the rest of it under all the... Yeah, what, what, and what's the long-term future for Medicare, Medicaid? Yeah. What, uh, they, they are eliminating the, the uh, mandate the Obamacare mandate, so a bunch of people are going to fall off the rolls. A bunch uh, of people means like 60 oh, million, million people. I, I don't know. I don't think we know exactly, but it, as many as 10, probably more, 10 million or more. And um, the, the, I mean, the real, the real, the real dangers of that, and and it sort of violates the Republican assurance that if they eliminated Obamacare, they were going to replace it with something that would work for the general population. Um, including all people, and there is no evidence of that whatsoever in this bill. Wow. Or uh, there doesn't seem to be the will to do it by the Republicans who passed it. So that's an example. No, let me ask you a question. Why would somebody like John McCain, who literally was a hero in my mind, and the conscience of the United States Senate when he voted uh, to against the repeal of Obamacare, Vote for something like this kind of reform. His statements have been he wanted to return. He didn't like the process. He wanted to return to general order, and he objected to what was going on with the medical uh, insurance issues because it just violated all what they call general order. They're slightly back to general order now, but I don't know 
about the Jeff, the Senator Flakes and the Senator McCain's, um, who, who uh, I think are, have a more balanced view of the, what should be happening in the country. The other side of it for, for the Senator McCain Republicans is their desire to increase defense spending, their mm -hmm. recognition that it's a dangerous world, and now we're risking, unless trickle-down works, not having the kind of revenue to fund a government that can uh, protect the country the way uh, Senator McCain would like it protected, and you know, probably most people, and still sustain people in need, education, um, the programs that are special to communities. Right. Those are the first ones that will go. And they're small programs, but they mean a lot to people. Um, Hawaiian education and issues like that here, health care, not a small issue. Those are all at risk. So is Obamacare at risk? I mean, are we going to lose the uh, universal, the, at least the, the, the foundation for universal well, health care? One of the elements that was critical to Obamacare was the, uh, the, the mandate, the, the mandate for, for people to buy into the insurance plan kind of complicated here, but that created the pools that you need, the larger pools that you need. So well, the, the more lower, people, risk, lower risk and higher risk people are in the same pool and it helps even out the cost. Now well, that's the reason why Hawaii has the lowest that's uh, right. health insurance uh, in, in the nation. And, and it was actually sort of a Republican concept when, yeah, way back you know, in the Richard beginning. Richard Nixon actually proposed the employer mandate. And Senator uh, we, we stole it from Nixon. And, and Mitt Romney instituted it as well, governor after us, in, after after us, us in, yeah. in Massachusetts. So it's not the private domain of Democrats, but it, that uh, mandate is gone now. And there is nothing in its place to secure the, con the, 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 the medical insurance system as it works. I don't know what's going to happen. I think a lot of people well, the, what the about uh, President Trump's uh, threat to um, s to stop to not pay the um, Medicare subsidies that he was uh, yeah that's that uh, are required the, the pieces of those, this are those gone too I don't know I don't I don't know if he actually went ahead and did that and how the pieces of this somebody's going to have to face the facts that the medical insurance system for America is going to devolve very qu quickly. And the result of that is going to be, you know, not just that people have no insurance or less insurance, but our, our, our uh, rural hospitals, which are already in danger, will be in more danger and will fold uh, in, in the country. And that emergency rooms, as they were in the past, will begin to pile up. So that people we, without in insurance Hawaii, will talking, run to emergency rooms. That's in, in the Hawaii, country. you're talking about places like Molokai Hospital. Well, I don't know what's going to happen because we have or a wonderful we have Big a wonder, Island. Or? We have a wonderful state that steps up for its rural areas, like probably few states in the country. But I think as a general rule, the risk across the country that rural areas are going to suffer more, that emergency rooms are going to become overcrowded. Unless somebody steps up now on the Republican side with the, with the plan to replace what they've cut away, we're going to fall back to the kind of emergencies we had before Obamacare. So, Chuck, how long have you and I have known each other? At least over 30 years, yeah. right? Pretty well over 30. Yeah, years. pretty well pretty over well, 30. Yeah. So that means that both of us uh, are a Social Security eligible, right? What does that mean for us? Well, I think I don't. I don't. Those know. of us that are, you know, as I said, Social Security eligible. So the Social Security is kind of always at risk. Whether you're asking me what as a result of this, I don't tax know. Report. I, don't, I don't know because because I'm getting all it. these emails from all my. The, but I think my, the medical side of, uh, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, that's the side that is, is probably at, going to be at risk first the most. Social Security comes from a pool, a funding pool that for the time being is stable. And I can't see even the Republicans trying to raid that. Well, did they, though? Did they, in fact, I do something I, that might, fa that might impact uh, uh, our I'm, Social Security payment? I'm not aware of that poison pill in this bill, no. But there, it's 500 pages long, and like I said, I certainly don't haven't read it yet, and I and I don't know if anybody. And then we the don't US know of any senators it. that actually read it when they raised their hands in favor of it. I think it's more likely that you're going to see the the real devolvement of the federal budget on almost everything else except Social Security. That's my guess because that's such a hot plate to touch. 
Whether they will later on try to change Social Security and the way it works. Well, that, they're that trying to privatize it, you know. Yeah, they want to privatize they it. They want to privatize it. So, you know, so then we get to, you know. In, invest your money and hope. We, we give the same Wall Street hackers that caused us the uh, recession of 2008 to run our Social Security system. That is a very cynical way to look at it. And probably accurate. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a little worried about that. No. You know, I I, I I kind of now let's talk about Donald Trump. He's obviously celebrating because this passed. The big deal for him. You know, it's really weird. But this guy, uh, you know, in a strange and almost diabolical way, has uh, succeeded with three groups by doing crazy things. I mean, he so just made groups. corporate America very. I think. Uh, he just gave them a, a, a Christmas present of enormous size. That's what he called it this morning. Yeah, he gave them, you know, and that's corporate America. He uh, he appointed a, a, a ultra right wing justice for the Supreme Court and kept the balance going in a direction that most of us find unthinkable. And you know, he's demonstrated his bigotry. And so, you know, when you add up all three... And there's a fourth one. Which is? He's, he's staffed his departments with... People who are going to destroy People it. who are ideologically really against the notion that government can do good. So, quick prediction from the special advisor to the... Uh, what happens in the, uh, to the Senator Shaw? What happens in the 2008 election, 18 election? Does any of this resonate with the American I think people? The, I think the large question is what is going to resonate and whether what's happening in this country and what's occurred in the last couple, well, last year or two, where the truth seems to be a frivolous thing, you know, people... Well, we partnerships are more important. But do we or do we not see some change occurring in 2018? Real quick, you got 10 seconds. Got to do it from the bottom up. Work real hard, the old-fashioned way. Say yes. We can. <laughs> we can. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Talk Story with John Waihei and Chuck Friedman, special advisor to Senator Brian Schott.